Hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna talk about the serve toss and specifically how to hold the ball in your hand and how to release it. And guys, the toss is super important on the serve. I always say that it's irrelevant how good your technique is on the serve. If you have an inconsistent toss, you're gonna to be forced to make improvisations. In fact, the toss is so complex that even some elite tennis players struggle with it. So if you have an inconsistent toss, uh, don't feel bad about it. This is something that's very common. And before we get into how to hold the ball properly and how to release it, let's refresh some toss basics. So there's gonna be three main ways how the arm can travel up into the release. There's gonna be the forward toss, there's gonna be the diagonal toss, and there's going to be the parallel toss. And all these three toss styles are correct, and you gotta find which one suits your game best. I want you to check out my video, Pinpoint versus Platform Stance, and there is a correlation in your stance, the amount of coil you're getting, and your toss style. So you gotta make sure that the toss style that you have matches these other two elements. Another thing that's important to remember on the toss is how far you should bring your toss arm into the backswing. So some players like to bring the toss arm into the middle of the body like this. I can show you from this angle. So players like Federer and Karlovic will bring the toss hand in the middle of the body. And players that do this usually will have a parallel toss. It's not always the case. There's even some players who will bring the arm back and then go diagonally into the court. So this is something that works really well with a longer type a take back. Players that have a little bit more abbreviated take backs, uh, they find it more comforting uh, to stop with the toss arm somewhere along here and then start the tossing motion from this position. This is personally my style. I have a semi abbreviated take back. So what I do is I bring my toss arm back to about this position and I start the to tossing motion from here. Players that utilize this style are, for example, Sam Query and Novak Djokovic. And when it comes to the toss arm structure, the best thing to do is to keep the toss arm extended, but not hyper extended. I see some players that hyper extend the toss arm and this can cause some stiffness in the tossing motion and this is not optimal. There's other players that are comfortable with having a slight bend. So this is not necessarily a deal breaker if you have a slight bend in your toss arm. Players such as Nadal and Kalovic have a slight bend in their toss and their toss is very consistent. So this is something that can work. But the optimal way to have the arm is not hyper extended, not bent, but as straight as possible. Just make sure that it's not uncomfortable. It should feel natural. And personally, I have my arm extended and I don't feel any strain. I don't feel any hyper extension. And this is gonna give you the best chances uh, to have a consistent toss. All right, how about the release point? Well, this is gonna be very difficult to gauge because the toss motion is gonna pick up quite a bit of speed towards the top. So right about where you release the ball, it's gonna get quite fast. So you're not gonna know where exactly you're releasing. But I always say you should imagine that you're releasing the ball between your forehead and your chin. And this area is where you should release the ball. And then when you do that, just remember that the toss arm needs to continue to go up a little bit so you can get that tilt and have a chance to execute the cartwheeling effect on your serve. All right, guys, here comes the important part. And this is where I see a lot of mistakes. How should you hold the ball in your hands? So you shouldn't definitely hold it in your palm like this because what will happen, it's gonna be very difficult as you're moving the hand up and to have what I call a flat release because you don't want that ball to be spinning around. You don't want it to go from your palm towards your fingers. And now you also don't wanna have it uh, towards the tip of the fingers. There are some players who utilize this style. I find it difficult to control the ball and often the ball uh, will have a tendency to slip off the fingers a little bit. The absolute best way to position the ball is the following. You need to get a good grip on the ball. So there are some players who are holding the ball like this and now the ball has absolutely no control and it's very easy for the ball to roll uh, either to the back, to the front, or even off your hand like this. So the ball has absolutely no support. So this is not how the hand should be positioned as it's going up. You need to hold the ball with all fingers and the ball should lay in the bottom portion of your hand. So let me show you uh, my hand and you can see the ball is gonna settle in towards my palm and it's gonna be on the bottom portion of my finger. So it's not gonna be up here. It's not gonna be down here. It's going to be somewhere in the middle of that, you see? It's gonna lay a little bit in my palm, you can see right there, on the bottom portion 
of my fingers right there. That is the absolute perfect way to hold a tennis ball. And this is really crucial that you hold it in this certain way. And now, for this to make sense in the context of the whole service motion, what I like to do is put my racket on top of my hand as I'm holding the ball. There are some players who will hold the ball like this as they're serving. Now the hands are already separated and it's just an awkward way to start. So you're gonna grip the ball with all fingers, you're gonna put the racket on top and now you're gonna go through your serving ritual. And I actually like positioning the ball to the side but you don't have to do that. You can position the ball down if you want but the most natural way is just to lay the frame on your thumb and your index finger. And the next part is crucial because what needs to happen is what I call a flat release. And this is where a lot of recreational players find problems. They don't have a flat release of the ball. Their ball is spinning too much. And let me show you what that looks like. I'm using a double colored ball for demonstrative purposes so you can see it better. You can see how this ball is spinning in the air. And you don't want this because if it's spinning, it's gonna start going in different directions and it's also a little bit harder uh, to hit the serve uh, when the toss is spinning. So this is not something that you want. You need to learn a flat release. But first, let me explain to you why this particular ball is spinning in the air. So what's happening here is I'm tossing the ball and the ball is rolling off my fingers like this. So I'm holding the ball a little bit too high and it's just rolling off my fingers. So the best thing to do on the toss is to just have a flat release of the balls and spread the fingers immediately. This is what it's gonna look like. I'm going to hold the ball in a position I previously described and upon the release I'm going to spread my fingers. You can see this ball is not spinning at all and I can control it much better. You see I'm just spreading my fingers upon the release and I'm not letting the ball roll off the fingers like this. Take a look. This is where I'm letting it roll off the fingers. So here this is what I call a flat release. You see that the ball is minimally spinning and not even at all in some instances. And the way you're going to do that is basically by having the ball towards the bottom of your fingers and a little bit inside your palm and upon the release you're going to spread your fingers really fast so that the ball is just leaving your hand like this and going straight up do not allow the ball to roll upwards or to the side and what needs to happen is that the fingers need to spread now there's a few different styles there are some players who will keep the fingers spread like this and there are some who will make the hand go parallel to the ground. I personally uh, like this style where the hand is going parallel, uh, but it's unimportant. The style can be your own choice as long as you learn the flat release. Now for you guys that have the diagonal toss and the parallel toss, you have to realize that the ball will arc so if you have a parallel toss for example and you don't make the ball arc towards the middle it's going to be too far to the side and this is not something that you want i always compare this to a hook shot in basketball so you got to imagine that your desired location of your toss let's just say 12 o'clock is going to be the hoop and the ball needs to arc from the right for right handers through the hoop you can see how it's arcing and falling through the hoop that's how the arc should work on the toss and this is also possible to do with a flat release. So if you take a look at this ball, I'm gonna have a parallel toss, tossing style and my ball is still not going to spin in the air. It's gonna be a flat release. You can see there's minimal spin on there because I'm employing the same style as I did before. As soon as that ball leaves my hand, I am spreading my fingers and therefore the ball is not rolling off my fingers. Take another look. You can see that the ball is minimally spinning. I can therefore control it a lot better. See, what a lot of players do who have these uh, two toss styles, the diagonal and the parallel toss style, is they will throw the ball uh, too far to the left if they're right-handed. And now uh, they have to hit the ball while it's still moving to the left. And this is very difficult to adjust your body uh, that way. And so in addition to learning the flat release, you also have to learn to maneuver the ball uh, through 12 o'clock or whatever your desired location is and not have the ball travel uh, further to the side. A lot of you guys ask me whether it's okay to practice a toss by itself without anything else happening and I'm not really a big fan of that because that's one of the biggest challenges on the toss because we're doing two separate actions with the hitting arm and with the toss arm. So you should always practice the toss in conjunction with the other side of your body. Now do you actually have to hit a serve 
Maybe not. What you could do to practice your toss is whatever style you have, you go up to the trophy phase and then you don't actually have to hit the ball, but just make sure that both arms are moving and this will somewhat replicate your real service motion. So guys, don't feel bad if you have an erratic toss. Like I said in the beginning of the video, even elite tennis players struggle with it. This is a very complex movement and it's perfectly understandable that it's not consistent. But the only way it's gonna get better is if you practice it. Do not ignore your toss. Go out there and get the reps in.